In today's video, we're going to be talking about Fujifilm's XF 18mm f1.4. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Dylan Goldby and welcome back to another Gear Short. In today's video, I'm gonna run you through uh, how I felt about using Fujifilm's XF 18mm f1.4 and sort of where I feel like it fits in my workflow. So this is not gonna be sort of a typical review where we run down the specs and talk about how sharp things are at certain apertures and things like that. It's gonna be more of a practical perspective on this lens. And so I thought I'd start by just discussing, you know, what is this lens? So 18 millimeters is a focal length that falls around the, the 27 or 28 millimeter uh, focal length in the full frame equivalents and so it's sort of that little bit wider than normal but not getting into really wide angle and so for me that's where it sort of really shines in my kit it allows me to you know get close to my subjects without too much distortion but also step back a little bit and get quite a bit in a wild a wide field of view for those reasons i was pretty much on board the moment fujifilm announced this lens now uh, during my years using Nikon's DSLRs, I used the 28mm uh, f2.8 quite a bit. I also used uh, Sigma's 24 to 35mm, and I hung around in the middle of that zoom range quite a bit. Um, I really love my X100V with the wide teleconverter. And so for me, this focal length is something that I really wanted to add to my, uh, my X kit as well. So for things like family sessions, corporate events, couple sessions, and just my personal work as well. So in order to give you my thoughts on this lens, the way I thought I'd approach it is to give you basically the three main use cases that I have for the lens, uh, what's been positive about it and what's been negative about it in those, uh, those particular cases. So let's start with uh, corporate events, which is something that I do quite frequently. Um, when I'm working at a corporate event, I'm often going to be uh, working at something like a networking event where I'll be weaving around between people who are talking to each other, having various discussions. And what I'll need to do is sort of capture moments of, you know, people discussing something um, with a little bit of context to them. And so that sort of wide field of view, uh, coupled with the, the very fast aperture of f1.4, allows me to get reasonably close to, say, uh, two people talking in the foreground and separate them with a little depth of field but then also uh, give you enough of the background to sort of understand where we are and what this event was. So it's been really, really useful for that. And you know, in the past, I've used the XF 23mm and the XF 16mm, um, but I stopped using the 16mm because I found that if I got close enough to really show my subjects uh, large in the frame, I'd end up distorting them quite a bit. And so if somebody, you know, moved their hand like this, they would end up with, you know, get, getting a bit closer to the lens and getting quite large. Whereas with the 18 millimeter, it's not quite that bad. And with the 23 millimeter, what I found was often I'd be so close to people that I couldn't actually get them in the frame. So we'll be in these small rooms with people talking to each other and you know you don't want to elbow one person out of the way so that you can get a photograph of somebody else. So the 18 millimeter has been a really good focal length for that. And you might say, well, you know, you could use a zoom like the, uh, the 16 to 55 millimeter. Um, but as I talked about in my review of that, I've never really enjoyed uh, the images that come out of that. It's also an f2.8, which on these cameras, gives you a little bit deeper depth of field. And in the dark rooms that I often walk, uh, work in, f2.8 is an aperture that I don't really even get to as even at f1.4 or f2, I'm working around the ISO 3200 range already. And so I don't wanna go too high in that, especially with these uh, smaller sensor cameras. So it's been really good for being able to get reasonably close to people, uh, separate them with a little bit of depth of field and give a little bit of context. But it's also really useful for, you know, simple product shots and being able to elevate those at say an event. So if we have a, a sponsor who's provided, you know, a certain bottle of wine or a certain drink or something like that, I'm able to really uh, get in close to that and just shoot it with a very shallow depth of field or with a little bit of background in there and just elevate my images above what, you know, somebody else in the room might be able to do. So a good example of that would actually be the cafe show that I photographed uh, here in Seoul a few weeks back. Now, the Australian Embassy had a booth there and they'd invited uh, the one of the latte art champions, Caleb Cha, to come and show 
show off his his latte art skills and you know teach the crowd how to do it a little bit and so uh, when he was done I asked him if he could make his uh, his world championship winning latte art for me and that I would try and get a, a nice photo of it that would sort of elevate it above the the regular event photos that we had and so what I did was I set it on a table and I just elevated a little bit by uh, placing it on top of some coasters I had some coffee beans in the background and shot it at f2 with the 18 millimeter so I could really get close to that cup of coffee but bring in a lot of that that background as well so sort of giving you a sense that you're there but still separating it from the background when it comes to family sessions, as I mentioned in my family kit video, which I'll link here or here or wherever it happens to be, uh, I often like to sort of have a lot of action, a lot of motion uh, in my family sessions, but also like to be really close to that motion. So being able to use a wide angle lens to give you a sense that, you know, I'm really there with the family to sort of you know, involve you in it. If you work with something like, you know, 100 millimeters or 140 millimeters or something like that, you have to step back quite a way and that sort of uh, translates into the images that you make. But if you can work with something more like 23 or 18 or 16 or something like that, you're able to really be in that moment with the family and, and create some really uh, sort of emotional pictures. And so, um, you know, f until now I've been using the 16 millimeter and the 23 millimeter, the 23 millimeter a little bit more so for the same reasons uh, that I mentioned with the corporate events, the 16 millimeter tends to be just that little bit too wide. You have to get a little bit too close. But um, both of those lenses have had, you know, some shortcomings. So the, the 23 millimeter and the uh, 16 millimeter have both got the older DC coreless motors in them. And so they are okay, um, quite fast on the new bodies when you're talking about AFS. So if you just want to have it go zip and focus on something, it's fine. But with AFC, um, they're not the fastest lenses. They don't track quite so well as the new lenses. And so you come home with, you know, maybe 20% of your images are going to be a little bit out of focus uh, when you're using the, the tracking modes on, on the Fuji cameras. So when I got the 18 millimeter, that was one of the first things that I wanted to try because it does have those, those linear motors in it. And Honestly, it has been a, an absolute game changer. So it's not quite as wide as the 16, so I can still get in nice and close and not really distort things too much. Uh, but it is that little bit wider than the 23, which means I can get a little bit more of that sort of up in your face kind of feeling. Uh, and it's very, very fast. And in AFC, I found that it really doesn't miss a beat. And I've maybe got one or two images out of focus as something really fast is happening in front. So really, really happy with the, the AFC performance. The other thing that benefits me a lot in my family sessions is that this lens is really well corrected. So I haven't really noticed any color fringing or sort of ghosting or anything like that. I often shoot quite a bit in uh, backlit scenes uh, towards the, the beginning or the end of day. And so I'm often dealing with light coming directly into the lens. And while you still get that nice kind of glowing effect around the sides of, uh, of certain objects, I haven't noticed any nasty fringing or anything like that. So one less step in post-production. When I get a new lens, I do try to keep it on me as sort of my sole piece of gear for uh, walk around shooting at that time. So any personal work that I do will generally be done on that lens, you know, for a couple of weeks exclusively, just so that I can get a feel for how the lens works, how it performs optically, and what it's gonna be like to carry around in say, you know, a a session like a family session or a, or a corporate event session. And so uh, one of the things that I have done as I've been cycling around is just take the uh, 18 millimeter and the new 33 millimeter as well and just go out and shoot absolutely everything I can with them and so two things that I noticed while I was initially starting to work with this lens uh, the first one is that the Sun stars are huge they're absolutely massive in the frame and they're not quite as you know defined and sharp as what you get out of the new 33 millimeter or some of Lauer's lenses but they definitely are quite large and can really add a, an interesting element to to certain pictures the second thing that I noticed was also with relation to the autofocus, and I think this is maybe my one disappointment with this lens, and I feel like maybe it's something that could actually be uh, fixed in firmware a little bit. I've noticed that at, at certain times when using AFS, so single autofocus, not the continuous tracking, um, that it does take a little bit to sort of ramp up to full speed. So as you push that uh, the shutter button to begin or your, your back, back button to begin focusing, I found that maybe it doesn't have quite enough torque or maybe it's just sort of doing a few calculations to sort of figure out where it has to go. But I find that in the first sort of 
quarter of a second or half second, you, you sense the lens sort of ramping up before it actually uh, gets in and, and focuses at full speed. And so I noticed this first when I was on my way home one day and stopped at a field of uh, cosmos flowers. And I decided to just try and test the up close focusing and uh, see if I could catch a few bees landing on the flowers. And so I was able to do that. However, it took a little while for me to figure out how to uh, basically catch them fast enough before they flew off. And so what I figured was happening is that the lens was actually focused on something a fair way away. And to bring itself back, it actually took a little while to ramp up. But once it was close, it's able to focus really, really quickly. So as long as you're in the ballpark, you'll be able to focus really quickly. And so what I found myself doing is sort of a, a walk around for this, a work around, sorry, not a walk around, uh, is to actually um, pre-focus on something that's sort of reasonably close to the same distance that I want to be working at, whether that be, you know, uh, the building that's, that's close to where my family might be standing, or whether it's, you know, a flower that's similar to the one I want to photograph when a bee lands on it or something like that. I'll just try and pre-focus on that, and that way the camera, uh, the lens, sorry, doesn't have too far to go to focus on that, and that little wind-up doesn't really matter. The other thing you might notice from these couple of close-up shots is that the bokeh is actually quite nice. Now, it's not something we usually discuss with uh, wide-angle lenses, but when it comes to really fast aperture wide-angle lenses, especially ones like this that can focus quite close, uh, you can find yourself using this for some sort of quasi-close-up shots where you might get some really nice bokeh. And so I've been really happy with the rendering from it. Okay, so that concludes my thoughts on the 18mm f1.4. Uh, if you're looking for a lens in this focal range with a fast aperture, I have no qualms in recommending it. It's got great technical image quality, it focuses close, it has nice bokeh, the AF is fast and silent with that one caveat that I mentioned before, which can hopefully be improved in, in firmware. One thing that might be missing from this review is a comparison to the old 18mm f2. Now, I did own that lens in the past, but I had it on my X-T1, so it was extremely slow to focus, and I always found that the images were a little bit soft, a little bit lacking. Now, I have heard different stories from other people, so perhaps that was just the fact that I got a bad copy of it. Now, I didn't have one for this review, but if you guys would be interested in seeing a comparison between those two lenses, do let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to get a copy of it. As always, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Now, there is a slideshow of images after this, so please stick around for that, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers!